goals. And that's it. Perfect. <laughs> no, no, you're set to go on course. You got 20 minutes on low sales. Then we can talk to you. You see. Welcome to your weekly program, Blahda. <clears throat> a show with an accent for those without one. So the news from Palestine is usually glam and it, the context of violence and uh, struggle and uh, war between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And uh, but we have today a very interesting story coming uh, uh, from uh, a Palestinian American. Uh, then he took himself to talk, uh, you know, to sail around the world under the Palestinian flag and to raise awareness of all those people over there. And since nobody tells the Palestinian uh, story, uh, especially in the United States, here is a great story about the Palestinian. Almost a year to prepare himself for this uh, journey and uh, went for an trip. We're gonna hear the story of the young man and the sea. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. And Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Sweet story, and I and I, I I still blame myself. How did I miss that one from the beginning? And you you would be amazed at how many did yeah. miss it from the beginning. So, I I found it to be a very difficult thing to get traction uh, for people to even believe. You know what was going, uh, what was underfoot. You know mm -hmm. with the the Golden Globe race and. Uh, and the, the history behind that and, uh, you know, 50 years since the last one. And it was a showcase for, uh, you know, countries that were fond of the sea and had strong seamanship skills. And, uh, you know, and I thought, well, why the Palestinians have nothing to cheer for? Why, why don't we uh, give them something to cheer for? They're not I, even I allowed to. With, well, and I asked first before yeah. I signed up for this. I, yeah. I, I called the, the Gaza, uh, head of Gaza Sail and Surf Federation, uh, uh, Mahfouz uh, Kabriti you know, and uh, said, why don't you have a Palestinian yeah, sailor? Yeah. One of your, you know, a uh, better sailor will always be the younger sailor that uh, had long experience. Yeah, uh, yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. know, who am I, a 30-year-old, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, first started sailing on Lake Calhoun at 30. Uh, you know, I'm a late bloomer, if yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not salt water. But I, I thought uh, there's no reason looking at all the different parts of a challenge like this why we couldn't compete. Compete and win. Uh, you know, I, I was a firm believer that that was fully possible, uh, and I thought it would be a, a great thing to uh, to showcase. You know, my two halves, which are you know, I'm born in uh, born Palestinian to two par Palestinian parents, uh, and uh, you in the know, United States. in the United States. But uh, you know, listen to my accent. <laughs> I've uh, lived here right in Chaska or Minneapolis for the majority of my life. It's even and I think that the, the Palestinians <laughs> and the Americans, they're, they're, they right have there. more in common uh, yeah. than, uh, than they either one thinks, uh, and having have a foot in each side, I can say that with confidence. Well, also it presents, uh, you know, some kind of uh, uh, problem, some issue for you uh, as you're making uh, the, your decision throughout. So before you get into this race, this race originated with this international uh, competition. Yes. And the country this one is the one country originated this, uh, the Golden it's, Globe. There was, it was done once before, 50 years before this. So this was the 50th Why it took so long to take another one? Uh, you know, the, the, there was a lot of uh, uh, trial and intrigue with the I first see. one. And, and so it was never done to those rules or called that again. But it was the grandfather of all of these other, you know, uh, BOC races or Vendée Globe. I mean, it really was the original. Oh, t tell us about uh, your relationship with water, with relationship with the sea. Your relationship f probably started here. We have ten thousand lakes. It has. To, we have ten thousand lakes and boundary waters, canoeing yeah. or water skiing. And I mean, uh, you know, yeah. living the pontoon life, even yeah. and fishing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have we have all that in spades. And for bigger water, we have Lake Superior mm -hmm. uh, and the, and the beauty that goes with it too. But uh, you know, my experience with water was limited, uh, other than you know having uh, friends with boats that we'd go out mm -hmm. on and sailing. Even less so, I didn't mm -hmm. really get acquainted with sailing until mm -hmm. my 30s in earnest. So how how is it different now? You are you are getting to the serious business of sailing in the salt sea ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea of ocean is really intimidating right. for anybody even to fly over it, let alone sail through it. 
So tell us uh, how did you how did this begin? You know how you were made aware yeah. of it. I there was so much literature from the first race. Yeah, and I should probably preface this with uh, you know as a late teenager, you know early twenties, I discovered this genre of literature, the the sea literature out there, uh, written by sailors. I, who knew that they were such prolific writers? Uh, and uh, I devoured one book, and then I couldn't stop myself. You know, each mm. one of these sailors that writes a book somehow references other authors like they read something mm -hmm. in some other book about another sailor's experience and so they, they they name each other and it made it very easy to go and gobble up all of this literature and then you know many years passed after i mm -hmm. took care of that fix and then i saw this race uh, advertised and i thought to myself gosh this would make me a liar you know when i was a kid reading those i used to say like oh it's a good thing i wasn't alive then they would have had to deal with you know, with me, you know. <laughs> you always uh, learn to stay away from the water. You know, even uh, when I lived in Palestine for those two years, uh, from the top of our house, you mm -hmm. could see the glimmer of, of, of the Mediterranean. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, of course, Sliver. it's very difficult to get there yeah, from yeah, where we course. were. But, uh, so, you know, it's, it'd be hard to say that we weren't people of the sea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, let's be honest with you. Know, history, yeah. Maybe our uh, the seascape has uh, shrunk in somewhat, but it, it, you know, same thing. Well, the Arabs, you know, start the uh, fleet right, the commerce and, and, you know, and with, it's not just the Mediterranean too. Yeah. You know, all of the Indian Ocean. Uh, so, uh, and then people to say like, oh, but this race has celestial navigation. You know, uh -huh. well, we, you, what does it, it even that means? You know, it, it's uh, it was a fun thing to learn. Is what it means. It. it it makes you look at the sky in a whole different way, and it was, uh, I think, for you know, so you a follow boy's the stars and uh, yeah, you you measure the angle of the yeah, sun over I the see. horizon, and well, then you you do some calculations <laughs> uh, after you measure this. Your ancestor have done invented this. They, uh, <laughs> you know, now we use a sextant, but they yeah. invented the astrolabe, and which was the precursor. And yes. you do it without your smartphone. Uh, you do without your smartphone or a calculator. I think that was my biggest uh, cha biggest challenge. How do you live? Without smartphone for, uh, you know, so the risk supposed to It was to the take. most refreshing thing ever. Is After it? the first few days, uh, there's a weird adjustment, and then... Uh, you are free. You are, you are free. And especially on a sailboat, there's no more, you'll never find a more free. <laughs> there is not notification every s two seconds? There's... <laughs> notification? No, yeah, Message it's a taxi, peace it? and quiet. The notification <laughs> I'm hoping for is the clicking from my fishing rod I'm uh, hanging off the back of the boat. <laughs> So we understand the, I, I know that I cannot make the analogy, the old man and the sea, you know, now that relationship between mm -hmm. this man and this fish and the sea. Yours was, what, what did you learn about yourself and the sea and all of this? You've been with yourself. How long, I mean, I know you didn't finish uh, uh, the... Uh, you know, I was probably on, uh, you know, the boat for a good 20 days. Uh, you know, I've been on a small sailboat for longer than that, yeah. you know, but... Uh, yeah, but you, you get, uh, you know how it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, after, after the first couple of weeks, really. Take us through one day, one of your day. You know, people think like you should have all this time to do stuff, uh, but there, if you're doing it right, there's a lot of things to do. Mm -hmm. Firstly, your sleep is broken up. Maybe some hours in the daytime, some hours at nighttime. For whatever reason, the boat always seems to need your attention at nighttime. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Murphy's Law. Uh, but there is, uh, you know, you wake up, you have to fix yourself breakfast or your coffee. Mm -hmm. All of these things take more time on board, w on a moving boat, you mm -hmm. know. You're, you're hanging on, How you're cooking you with one. Well, maybe six or seven miles an hour. Okay. Uh, but it's all about the seascape. Yeah. You know, how big is the sea? How lumpy is yeah. it? You know, <laughs> that's... <laughs> you're not making a headways or six hours. <laughs> oh, you would be amazed, you know, six hour, or six miles an hour for 24 hours. You know, yeah, now you I have see. Uh, and 140 you have miles. It's, uh, you know, you made it all the way to D Duluth. You yeah. know, that's just and you have way. nine months to finish that right. uh, around right. that trip. Tell us, uh, and uh, so, y y y you know, y y Basically, you spend all this money to try to navigate and uh, you know keep survive. Survive. You know, you need to be sur to survive. So, what are the dangers? What are the, what are you facing there beside the water? I, the the dangers are are probably fatigue uh, that can creep in slowly uh, and uh, and wear you down if you are not sleeping right. You know, or you're yeah. not taking your time. It is an easy thing to think that I, I can't sleep right now. I can't. You know, but. You have to sleep, you know. I, I know. Uh, I heard one of the other competitors say it's like s 
curling up in the back seat of your car at 55 miles an hour, you know, it's very hard to do. And it's, it's a good description, <laughs> but once you get your hands around it and you yeah. realize you need it, you're not going to stay awake for nine, day, nine months. Uh, so the sleep was not, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, out of, uh, sleep was never my, my hard point. I, yeah. I can sleep anywhere yeah. on a hard floor. Uh, whatever, and I can fall asleep as quickly as I want to. Uh, so this is, my, you know, a trick, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, we all have those. Well, th those Arabs have those tricks. And, uh, yeah, well, we natural. Comes natural. But uh, that strong conviction that Paul has that I'm going to go and do, the, how, how many people were in this race? Uh, 19 uh, started, I believe. That it was in different countries? Right, yeah, from uh, all over the place. In New Zealand, Australia, England, Ireland. Norway, Russia, you, you know, uh, uh, Estonian, Finnish, you know, people that you'd expect to be in that race. Was that uh, taking place during the World Cup? It was. Uh, so there is the World yeah, Cup playing that's soccer. A lot of competition right? there, right? Eh? <laughs> and they even had it at the marina on a big screen TV, so we could watch. Uh, really? You know, watch the games, right? So, but that's probably I didn't hear about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> was, yeah, probably. I watched 64 games in, 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 within one month. So you have this 1920 uh, country represented. You you you, d you decided to represent Palestine. Uh, yes, I Your did. Your heritage. Uh, you, well, yes, and there was uh, already an American flag or two that was to be in the race, and and so I thought, you know, I'd, uh, these people were very warm and hospitable when I when I lived there and visited, and uh, they gave me everything, you know, even though they had nothing to give, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, to see how we're always portrayed in the in the you know the general uh, mainstream media, it's you know only time you are mentioned is for a negative, and uh, I, I thought uh, you know sport unifies everybody. Everybody loves sport, right? Yeah. Especially coming from the Midwest, you know, what are you, you raised yeah. from a young age uh, to a whole dear sportsmanship and fair play. And, you know, to find out that the, the Palestinians, they'd love to send uh, one of their crack sailors from Gaza, but they, they uh, are not allowed to get to the Olympics or anything. Mm -hmm. Not because the Olympics or Golden Globe doesn't yeah, yeah. let them in, but because they aren't given visas to travel to compete. And, uh, you know, that's just a, that's a, a that's horrible a shame. You can't, you can't abide by it. It's untenable. No, and so no, something no. has to be done. And if I, oh, hopefully this will call some attention to it. Uh, if uh, you don't know what the results of any race would be, if not everybody gets to play that wants to compete, that's you know you well, know. when the rules are set, right. uh, apply to everybody. Absolutely, we can we can excel. But uh, uh, you named your boat Liberty, mm -hmm. which is USS. Yeah, the USS Liberty. I mean, this is a it's a you know dark spot in in our history, but yet at the same time we're uh, you know a. Uh, you might, American side, you know, we're proud of our military, uh, you know, and uh, the the armed forces. And here is the most highly decorated ship in the U.S. Navy's ever history, you know. And no one ever heard about it. Nobody no. knows anything about it. And uh, you know, before these uh, these guys are older now, so you know, before they pass on, I, I thought, uh, you know, they've been given nothing, uh, and so. I'll try, and to, this, I'll try to, you know, raise some awareness to that. And uh, it was something that I always held dear. My father was in the Navy, uh, you know, lieutenant commander in the, in the Navy around those same years. Uh, 67, we we'll talk about mm -hmm. the six, six Days War, and it was uh, torpedoed by the Israelis. Uh, oh, they tried to sink it, you know, yeah. with all hands. They, they wanted to blame it on Egypt, and, yeah. and they really wanted it to sink without a trace so they could make their own story and craft yeah. it. And, uh, but those good boys, though, they didn't let it go down. They didn't give up the ship either, and uh, you got message out and uh, and saved themselves and their ship. Uh, and you know, it's a it's a great story. There was the most highly decorated ship in our. You we know, don't hear about it. All we hear about the the one the one who's they, bombing the right, Iraq and Afghanistan right. and all of this. But they were they were great guys. You know, they tried to make it out to the start of the race. They uh, you know uh, presented me with uh, some books that they wrote. You know, some of the seamen of the ship uh, mm -hmm. here here uh, he, here yeah, yeah, and gave me uh, the official USS Liberty hat and jacket. Wow. You know, which uh, I wore proudly at the start. Uh, it was it was that great. Is amazing. That's very. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there is a story there because you, uh, you know, a Palestinian American going to Liberty, which he was sunk very close to Palestine. Oh, you know, no, of, uh, I, I don't Egypt. think you can find an American that could empathize more with the Palestinians than uh, no, no. than the seamen of the Liberty because they uh, saw what we see every day. They yeah. got a little taste. You know, I mean, this is uh, <laughs> they're not watching Fox News, eh? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, the boat itself has to. You, know, you don't just take your boat. 
<laughs> you just go there. So what's I mean, how I you had prepare your bowl? I freeze dried nine months worth of food at my house. Uh, I you know spent a year and a half doing that, making big dishes and freeze drying it and. Uh, uh, getting uh, sailing gear here. My sails were made in St. Louis Park at uh, you know Sail Crafters. Uh, Tim Carlson, big big helper. Mm -hmm. Even you know the proprietor of the sail loft let me uh, hang out on weekends and teach me skills. And uh, he even made it to England for the uh, the race before the race, uh, mm -hmm. where all the competitors had That's a short it, to and qualify prompt, to qualify and all mm -hmm. you know to go from England to the start of the race in France. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know we started five hours after the fleet. Uh, so last place, yeah, because we were still working on the boat. It's oh, really? nature of not oh, having a sponsor. Always come Always late. late. <laughs> Always late. Yeah, yeah, it's true, you know. And, and there is something uh, nice about being late, you know. You've seen everything and you can see everybody in the front. Right. And then, you know, we, we did play a little uh, Pac-Man and yeah. uh, we gobbled up some guys and we finished sixth, you know. So it was, was, uh, it was a promising uh, short uh, view of the future of what I was hoping. I know that we always look at the the bigger picture, the scheme of this wonderful trip. It, w it was really competition against your doubts. Against yourself. Oh, Self-doubt is probably your yeah. biggest enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, Self-doubt uh, comes out at the very beginning of the race when you're too wound up to sleep, you know, and uh, you're, you're wondering if your navigation is going to work. It, it works great off of the dock, mm -hmm. but now uh, when I take my measurements on the water <laughs> and a boat that's moving, yeah. Is this all going to work out? You know, the yeah. food. Uh, when nobody's this, around. <laughs> uh, there were many questions, you yeah. know, and, and uh, self-doubt is, you know, is probably the constant enemy, uh, and you have to keep it at bay. I know there is a sweet story that you told that you actually saved a bird. Oh, right. Tell us about that. Uh, I saw, you know, it was a beautiful day off of the coast of Portugal. I was headed, uh, I had the El Norte, the, the north wind that comes out of the mm -hmm. north. It was a great day, and uh, and I saw all these big white birds, you know, doing just like in the nature channels where you see them mm. plummeting into the water yeah. and going fishing. And I saw bonito and tuna jumping around and dolphins. So I said, good enough time for me to go fishing. Yeah. I put out my line and my trolling line, and uh, and the dolphins, I swear, they were telling to tell me something. You know, they were jumping by the boat. Mm. And I looked back, and I got this big bird, and I had to reel it in fast because I didn't want him to drown. Uh, and he was big and ornery, the size of like a, a wild turkey that you'll see here in Minnesota. And a uh, big curved beak with, you know, serrated teeth. And he was very angry with me. And I had to throw a blanket over his head and hold his head while I got the hooks out. And then he didn't want to leave. And he was very angry still. And I had mm. to, I had to evict him. You know? <laughs> yeah, it was, it, he wasn't playing nice, yeah, you know. No, didn't <laughs> pay the rent. <laughs> didn't pay the rent, right. You know, I mean, you're supposed to uh, uh, take nine months and you, you were ready for that. You have I enough was. supply and you only took, you said, 20 days or 19. What happened? Well, I, I was, uh, I passed by the Canary Islands and uh, actually the race organizers uh, came out to meet me in a little boat, you know, and uh, just to see how everything was going. And I was well rested and I uh, was feeling fresh and I was really actually ready to go uh, and try to, uh, you know, make a strong showing of it in this downwind portion that's coming mm -hmm. up. But uh, 12 hours into the downwind leg, where uh, it was uh, probably a strong 35, 40 mile an hour wind, but coming right from behind me. Same with the, the seas were also breaking behind me. Mm -hmm. It was exhilarating, but unfortunately it proved to be too much for my self-steering self gear. Uh, stainless steel pipe broke off in the middle of the night, and I tried for a good 10 hours to make repairs, and uh, you know, nothing was really holding and lasting. Uh, and so I knew I had a, a grim choice. Either you, you, you need to go to uh, Cape Verde Islands, maybe another thousand miles away, this, but it's downwind. You're not allowed to ask for help, are you? Uh, no, but I, with this broken the way it was, I was going to have to get some repairs and maybe uh, accept a penalty from the race organizers. I see. You know, I see. Uh, but uh, you, by the, I decided on the Canary Islands, which was closer, but back into that strong wind. And, Can uh, I go back? I, you probably shouldn't have gone back, but uh, I did. I, I made it back to the islands. Mm. Unfortunately, it, it did destroy me. More to, damage. Uh, yeah, to, to myself at that point. You know, 60 hours of no yeah. sleep and yeah. uh, steering. It was very physical and it was rough weather. And, uh, you know, no sleep for 60 hours uh, makes a person start to How hard was slip. the decision, though? 
You know, it was uh, in because, the beginning. Uh, I didn't want to make it. The uh, tagline of your uh, boat is what? Don't give up the ship. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I feel as though I kept to that. I didn't want to give up the race either, though. I but see. I realized I that uh, what was broken is the one thing that it's critical. Nobody can get around without it, and you know, at least alone. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was times after 40 hours of hand steering and being completely exhausted where I did probably fantasize about, you know, where's the eject button? Let's <laughs> give up the ship. Uh, but I also knew that there was, you know, this was a solo race that you were to rely on your own uh, wherewithal. And, and there would have been some, uh, you know, I would have been upset with myself if I didn't use up all of me yeah. to get back without... You know, no second assistance. guessing there when you come back. No, and it was decisive when I decided to turn around. It was uh, I knew this was going to be a 100% effort of multiple days to get <laughs> back there. That was the hardest part of this whole race. Exactly. Was turning Going around. back. Yeah, huh? it was. And I think uh, to wrap this up, I think you said something uh, even before you get into the race when people will say, you know, you know, where are you going to get the fund? Where are you get the money? You said it is about how much the boat is. It's just about the boat itself. Right, something like it's not the money, it's not it, it, uh, the, the, how the, good the boat is, or it's just uh, your relationship with the boat. Maybe? Yes, preparation. Mm -hmm. Preparation is probably ninety percent of it, and having a good boat. Everybody had, uh, you yeah. know, a seaworthy small, yeah. you know, family cruising boat, but they used to make them really stout in the seventies, and mm. these were old designs. Yeah. Uh, so there was no question there. You know, I. Uh, it's the it's the preparation and the spare parts and do you have a plan for every eventuality? Making decisions. Uh, uh, and the uh, decisions are uh, that's uh, on you. You yeah, know, I mean, it is it is only your life, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's only fair that you are the one that makes <laughs> that decision. And, uh, what you, you still uh, you still following the race? Absolutely, absolutely. What's every going on day. there? You know, there was one other guy with my same self steering gear, the same make and model. And he was leading the race. He's a French. Him, I'm sure. Uh, you know, I I liked him. Uh, Philippe was a great guy to to, yeah. to hang out with, and uh, you know, they, uh, they were all great. I I have a special relationship with all of them. To tell yeah. you the truth, I you know my favorite I thought was Mark Slatz. Uh, you know, he's a Dutch guy, a big uh, rower. He rode across the Atlantic and smashed mm. all these records. Yeah. But uh, for the reason that he is uh, physically tenacious and not lazy. Uh, and at the same time, he's not a professional sailor like uh, many of these oh. other guys are. He will make up that, uh, you know, whatever skill that there is in deficiency of, if there is any, he will make it up for just brute strength. It's like this guy at the Jaws, you know, the guy. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's the <laughs> he's courage. The courage guy. He is the courage, this that's is, right. Maybe yeah. they have a story there. <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, a good buddy. Yeah, and Do you guys like, sail all the time? Do we sail? Yeah, you know. They all night or you just yeah, rest? Yeah, yeah. No, there's no stopping at really? night. Yeah, there's, uh, you, you Even know if when you sleep? You, you become almost angry when the boat stops for whatever reason. If you're working on yeah, something, yeah. you are constantly yeah. uh, Missing thinking something about <laughs> that we need to keep make way. They yeah, say keep on making yeah. you know, keep progress. And when you end up stopping the boat, it's like uh, lighting the fuse of a firecracker inside of you uh, <laughs> where the frustrations build. And uh, the eagerness to get started build, mm -hmm. and uh, and your temper, you know, becomes shorter. So now you are back, you know, had this wonderful experience, uh, transformative. People go to Mecca, <laughs> yeah. pilgrimage. Yeah, right. That was a, a more transformative experience. <laughs> so uh, well, you certainly got closer to God, you know, <laughs> that's exactly. for sure. You uh, and you know, for people that like, <laughs> see, uh, you know, mountainscapes, and yeah. they find this beautiful and awe-inspiring, or going yeah. to the Boundary Waters and its beautiful lakes and yeah. hills and woods. I think that the seascape is just as beautiful as anything like that. Isn't you know, in its many moods, uh, it's a it's a beautiful thing to behold, and you feel so tiny and so fragile. Look, look at these miles of water, untouched. White foam, untouched. You know, uh, and, yeah. or a uh, nice day, untouched. Uh, but it's you are the only one there enjoying it. it when I when I was special. in the military in Egypt, I used to sneak out early in the morning or late, late at dusk, and I look at these miles of sand. Oh, yeah, Untouch. Yeah. I feel Not God. A footstep in there. Nothing. I feel God just left. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm the only one. I'm just the first one to come here. Mm -hmm. Well, Nabil, thank you oh, so I much for pleasure. sharing this story. This is a wonderful story. We wish you all. I know this is not the end of them. You relax, take your time. You have nine months. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we planning. have some time. <laughs> Nabil Amra is, a, you know, a sailor that decided uh, to take uh, uh, a trip around the world under the Palestinian flag, raise awareness 
of this, the, uh, you know, the, the blade of the Palestinian, that nobody is telling the Palestinian a story in this country. Here is one, and check him out, and we'll follow him. We'll see you next week. Salaamu Alaikum, and God bless you all.